Hello and welcome to Pickles Garage. Today we're going to be replacing my OptiSpark distributor. If you've seen some of my other recent videos, you'll know that I recently replaced the water pump on this as well. I really wish I did both jobs at the same time because I am going to have to actually remove the water pump on this as well. So if you're already planning on doing your OptiSpark, I would also recommend replacing the water pump at the same time. And I'm also going to recommend on my other video that they do the OptiSpark when they're doing the water pump. So. You'll notice a couple different issues with a failing OptiSpark, starting issues, kind of bubbling, sort of a jerky motion uh, when you're accelerating. So a couple different things that will happen. OptiSpark, if you're more familiar with some of the older engines, is, is really just a distributor. And so naturally with the rotor spinning, if there's any issues with it actually sending spark to any of these leads, your engine is not gonna run properly. So similar concept there. We're gonna go ahead and get this removed today. You can find these fairly wide range of prices. I know MSD actually has one upwards of 700. I spent over 300 on mine, but I definitely didn't get the 700 option. There are a lot of cheaper ones, but just with the length of the repair and also the importance, I, I wouldn't go too cheap on it if you can help it. And hopefully we'll go ahead and have an easy time getting this knocked out. So let's go ahead and dive in. So to kick us off, we're gonna go ahead and remove the intake. There should be a clip here, mine doesn't have it, so this will just pull straight out like that. We're gonna set that aside. There's also usually a bolt right here. Mine also doesn't have that. And there is this, which we'll go ahead and loosen. So I really wasn't having issues with mine, though it is very common for getting, uh, like if you have a failing water pump and it gets liquid on the actual Opti for it to fail. So again, I think that's just why it's better to do it all at once. But I did notice uh, like a hairline crack on mine and it really wasn't performing poorly. It was running actually really well. So I didn't think to replace it. Figured I could wait a couple more months or so, but naturally it decided to bite me in the butt. So we're gonna go ahead and continue to remove this. I think actually there's one more hose back here. Yeah, there we go. Pull straight up and out of the way. All right, and then that will expose my brand new shiny water pump that I need to remove once again. So I'm going to try and remove as little as possible and so that means we're gonna do these two and pull this up rather than removing the hose. There are a couple different other hoses that we're gonna have to remove. We got here, so here, 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 and then we're gonna have a connection here which I'm gonna leave on until I remove all these because if there is any water that spills down, I just wanna keep that as dry as I can. There's a connection here and there's another connection right there. Also, just from experience knowing that to get this water pump out this way we're gonna have to remove this electric fan as well and drop it down and then that way we'll be able to pull this back and then turn it so like I said I'm going to go ahead and start removing these connections but rather than having it spill all over my face right away I am going to drain the coolant so let me show you where that is so here is another view from underneath as mentioned plug connection there got hose here hose there and the fan which will have four bolts unless you're like mine which is missing one but you'll just remove these so we won't do that right away we'll go ahead and drain the coolant like I mentioned and that is just gonna be on the passenger side right here we're gonna go ahead and get this twisted and drain out the coolant All right, so while that drains, we're gonna go ahead and remove some of these other connections. This is gonna be size 10 right here. When in doubt, size 10. Now, no matter how much you wait for it to drain, no matter what you pop off, it's always going to continue to drain from everything that you take off here. So that is unfortunate, but, but I had the system really, really well contained. I didn't have air bubbles anywhere. So basically every time I pull something off, there's gonna be more fluid that's draining. 
right, we'll pull that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my thermostat out and set it aside. That way I don't lose it somewhere else. If you haven't replaced this either, also a good idea, get a new one. Keep, keep this in good shape for sure. So you can get hose tools, uh, Amazon, different places like that. You don't necessarily need them. You can use pliers as well, but these make everything extremely easy just because they lock into place. And so rather than pinching it and having to hold it and having issues with it slipping or something like that, these do a great job of keeping it contained like that and then locking in place. And then I can just move this up and release it. Saves you some time and energy. So I'm gonna yank on this because this will probably take me a little while just to jimmy it out, but I'll undo this as well. And then that is basically it for what we need to do at the top. Cause now we're disconnected here. We'll be disconnected here. You don't have to remove this one cause this will all come off with itself. And then I'm gonna remove this hose carefully. It might split. If yours splits, I would just replace it. And then we're gonna go down below. Now we are underneath and we just have the Hoses on either side, I'm gonna use that same tool you saw earlier, get those slid off, and then I will remove that connection, and then we are good to start working on the bolts. Now, in order to get to the ones on this side, it's fairly easy, and I'll show you, um, that you really don't have to remove anything else to get to it, but this side, you probably are gonna to wanna to go ahead and remove the belt. So we're gonna do that as well, and then there is a specialty tool that helps make this a lot easier and I'll show you that as well. So as mentioned, anytime we're popping off hose, just be prepared for there to be some water. So like no matter how much you drain it, there's gonna be some. So keep a bucket handy and maybe wear your swim trunks and your second favorite shirt. So this is going to be size 14. There's going to be six total, three on each side. Like I mentioned earlier, this side uh, super easy to do. We're just gonna use a little bit of an extension here. I'm gonna use a long ratchet just to get more torque on it and I'm going to break that loose. And so I'll do this side and then I'm going to do a little longer for extension for that. And then I'll use the exact same extension on the lower bit and I will show you the more complicated side. 916 also works fine. Uh, 14 was a little snug for some, but it worked for others. Just when they get a little rusty, they vary a little bit. So that's the top one done. And then we have that middle one is still there, and you'll see the bottom one is also removed. So I'm keeping the middle one there, though it's very loose, just to hold it all in place. And now I'm going to shift over to the other side, but first I'm going to go ahead and remove the belt. So from underneath towards the passenger side of the engine block, there's this wheel right here, and it has a half size nut on it. And essentially all you're going to do is you're going to take your long ratchet, and you're going to twist it to tighten it, right? And that takes tension off the belt itself. So that's how we're going to remove the belt. You'll see one of the bolts that we need to remove this for is actually right there. That is probably the, the more difficult one uh, just because it interferes the wheel a little bit. And I'll show you how to get it off. But we have this lower one here also next to... The belt, I'll probably try and grab that from down here just because it's a little easier once the belt is off. And then the other one, which is equally that same distance, like up here, is uh, a lot easier to get towards the top. So I'll knock out these two and then I'll show you how to get rid of this deep one. But all this is started by removing the belt. And then because I'm going to need to remove this fan here, I will do that here shortly as well. So that way we can get this all out. So with the belt gone, I was able to get the lower one. This top one is running into the fan with my ratchet, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get this removed because I will need it for the removal of the pump itself. It is just gonna be size 10, as mentioned in these corners. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get these taken off, and then I will pull the fan out and drop it to the bottom. And then I will show you 
the most difficult bolt here. And then for the top here, a deep socket helps best. Bottom one, I think realistically you could just use the extension or you could just have your regular 9 16 with the ratchet. But that middle one, what you'll need is you'll get this wobble extension. And so all this does is it doesn't fully seat. It can, but it also has the ability to hold the socket here with a little bit of an angle. And so that way you can be slightly off because that wheel comes out to about here. And so if you just have a straight extension, it's really hard to get to and a wrench is really hard to get to as well. That is just the best way I've come up with it. If you don't have the wobble extension, you're able to come up with something else, you know, feel free to comment. But this is just the, the best way that I've found is to get the wobble extension. You can get the pack and get them on Amazon. They're pretty cheap. And we'll go ahead and get that other final middle bolt removed and then I just have that other one that's holding it in place and then this is completely free for me to take out. Now that the fan is gone you'll want to not hit these fins that are on the inside here. You don't want to damage those you'll see there's a little bit already just from wear um, but if you hit those and close them those off it makes it hard for it to do its job so you don't want to damage it but like I said we'll go ahead and get those final two middle bolts removed and then this will get helicoptered out and we will go from there. So now we can see our OptiSpark right here. Uh, basically just to get the water pump out, you have to kind of go forward, tilt it more this way. And then with the missing fan, you're able to kind of go in and then down underneath. So that is how we will put it in as well. But You'll notice there's some liquid around, liquid around here, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe around this area. I'm also going to disconnect the negative to the battery. Really, anytime you're working with anything electric, you should, you know, remove that just to avoid damage to both yourself and the equipment. But we're gonna go ahead and get that disconnected. You'll notice on the sides here, and I'm gonna double check on the new one as well, but it'll say which cylinder it's going to. You're gonna to wanna to label each of these just to make it a lot easier. You can ultimately follow it if you absolutely need to in order to get it you know, reconnected, but it's just better to label them. That way you could pop it on the new one without any issues. So we're gonna start working on that. We're also going to need to remove this wheel here from the crank, um, just, these three bolts and then this will slide off that way we get access to, to more of it but I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna dry this off I'm gonna remove the negative side of my battery and then I'm going to work on removing this wheel and then we're gonna start working on the bolts and the plugs on the Opti itself. Now there are a lot of different tools like specialty tools that you could buy that will hold that harmonic balancer in place while you're removing those three bolts. But realistically, if you have one ratchet with a 5 eighths and then another with, I think this is also 5 eighths, yes. And you have one holding the center bolt here and then another one right there in the hole doing the three bolts and you should be good to go. So that is how we're gonna go ahead and remove this. So you may need a uh, second pair of hands, just someone from up top with a pipe on it, right? And then you holding the uh, center bolt on the wheel from below, and then eventually they'll pop on off. Now I lined it all up, so you'll see that there's an arrow at the bottom of the wheel. And then there's also this indent here on the timing cover, it's still really blurry unfortunately. And then there's also that marking right there. So I just lined that up just to make it a little easier when I pop it back. So I'm gonna put some, uh, some cleaning solution around the actual nub there and let it soak for a little bit and then I am going to try and get this pride off. There's a number of different tools that you can use to, to remove stuff like this so I do have a couple that I will try to do. Uh, this is a car from up north so I imagine this is going to be on there pretty good and I will let you know what I've used that worked. 
All right, so here would be our standard options. Now, these kits, they are extremely helpful and they're fairly easy to find. And this would be, I would say, the, the most highly recommended way to go about it. What it essentially is, is it's got this kind of duck foot that is gonna go on the front of your balancer with this screwed in here to the middle, right? And then you would put this little point on the other side and so that way it can rotate, but it's not gonna be grinding because it'll just be spinning in here, right? And then all you'd need from there is you just find which of the three bolts are gonna fit your specific need. And then naturally as this turns, it is going to pull and push kind of the towards the engine and pull the wheel off. So this would probably be the best way to go about it. Unfortunately, I'm gonna verify of course but eyeballing it i don't think any of these bolts that came with the kit are actually the right size i might be able to get away with using the bolts that came on it originally but they are going to be significantly shorter which is a concern naturally i might have to find three other bolts around um, that might still work for it and so that's kind of what i'm dealing with because like i said this would be the ideal way to go about it the other way is if you don't really have a whole lot of issues with it being too tight, you might be able to just get a crowbar on it and yank it off. The issue there is you are going to be pushing up against the old Opti and potentially other things which could cause damage. Granted, you are replacing it anyways, but as this is primarily a replacement of just the cap, I don't really want to risk damaging too much to the casing itself considering I'm gonna to have to reuse some of those parts. So this would be absolute worst case scenario. Now, another option, which is also slightly a bad option, is gonna be something like this. These are amazing, I love them, I use them far too much to be honest, because they just, they just work. I mean, it's essentially the same concept as this, except you got these claws, and I have the kit so I can adjust it, so I can have it on three prong, I can have it on two, and essentially you're just screwing this and it pushes while these are pulling, right? The issue there is because this doesn't actually spin loosely like this does, being a separate piece, this can potentially dig in to whatever it's pushed on, which in this case is that center bolt in the middle of the wheel. So this isn't ideal because you can chew them up I have had to use it in extreme scenarios and it just ate away the, the peg and it did do some damage. Um, but ultimately it was what I needed at the time and it worked and I was replacing parts anyways so I justified it. But some things to consider. So once again, I'm gonna try and make this work but it doesn't seem like the kit comes with bolts that are big enough for the specific need I have. So keep that in mind. If you see this kit, it might not be what you're looking for. This would be the secondary. This would be kind of a Hail Mary. So let me get working on this and I will show you the best way it went. So here's what we're working with. I do have five eighths on the end of it. I've lined it up. I have each of these hooks on the other side of the wheel. And like I said, as I crank this, it's going to be pulling. This isn't ideally the way I would want to do it. The, uh, the duck foot or whatever, it actually, the slots were too narrow for the original housing bolts. But I think if I was, recommending this to someone maybe i would just ground the uh duck housing a little bit just so i can get the original bolts in and then i not have to then i wouldn't have to actually set it up like this what i'm doing is i'm kind of gambling on the fact that maybe this isn't on there too tight because again i really don't want to damage that center bolt i'm just hoping that all it needs is a good couple cranks and then it'll go so hoping for the best here and uh we'll go from there but Usually there's a fairly satisfying pop that happens once anything major happens and then it becomes very loose. So it does look like it's moving ever so slightly. You'll see this now has a ridge here. So it doesn't look like it's going to give us that pop, but that just means that it actually wasn't on there all that tight anyways. So we're in good shape here. I doubt this was doing any damage. So this is probably the secondary way to do it. Like I said, I use these all the time. Let's 
see what we got going here. Yeah, bolt looks fine. So that works just, just like I was hoping, optimistically. Um, so you'll see that there's an arrow right down, oh, right down here. It lines up with this. The holes actually aren't perfectly spaced. And so this will only go on one way, but just to make it easy, I just lined everything up. So when this goes back on, I'll go ahead and snug it. But now that we have this off, we can focus on the Opti. So back up top, we're gonna to start removing some of these connections. Uh, you would want to, just to make it easier on yourself later, mark these. I tried to do it with Sharpie. Mine is really dirty, so it only worked for the first three. Um, I'm gonna see if I can get like maybe nail polish or something from my lady uh, and see if that works. But I'm gonna go ahead and get these removed. Sometimes helpful tool like is like this, just so you can get a better grip on it. Go ahead and pinch it, pop it off like that, and you're good to go. I'm also, because it looks like someone did a sort of like heat wrap on this, and because I'm gonna be reusing this anyways, I'm actually gonna disconnect it from up top, which if you follow, is just gonna be right over here, and then I'm gonna redo that loom, so. I'll disconnect it here, just pop this off, do that with two hands, and get that exposed as well. But right now we're just labeling each of these, popping them off, and then we're going to start taking this off. Now we do have a little bracket here, it seems to like 7mm the best. It actually wasn't even tight enough for me to have to use a ratchet, but we'll just get that disconnected here, just so we can pull the whole unit off put that back so I don't lose it. Now this is around when the path is going to change a little bit if you bought a cap and rotor or if you bought a whole new unit. So I will explain in detail for really both but the MSD cap and rotor that I got is going to have some additional steps that actually improve its life expectancy versus OEM. So like I said I'll cover both but stay tuned. So if you have an all new unit, you should be able to remove this plug here. Maybe you won't have this heat wrap like I do. Um, or like I said earlier, you can remove it from up here and take it all with it. Especially if your new kit came with a new harness, I would just exchange it naturally. And there's going to be a series of these nuts, right? And they're all going to be 3 8 and then essentially this will just come off very similar to your water pump ironically enough and there will be a sort of gear just like this behind it and it's going to have a flat spot and that's going to help clock it properly so because i am replacing my cap and rotor rather than the actual unit itself the directions are going to be a little different but just so you know if you pop this off with those bolts and line up that gearing with the flat spot in the same place and just clock it properly, then you will be good to go. But if you're here for the MSD cap and rotor replacement, then this is the next step that you're gonna be doing. There's gonna be these little pieces like this and your kit will come with a specialty tool to help remove those. So we're gonna remove each of those right now get the cap removed and I will show you the next part you want to be familiar with what your kit came with it does have a few extra parts that don't really line up exactly with your OEM OptiSpark and the reason for that is because the OptiSpark has a few issues over the years they've determined how to sort of fix the issue mostly it's just moisture in the actual OptiSpark, if your coolant gets leaked out of your like weep hole for your water pump, then it can damage it. And so in order to combat that, they've actually made it so that there's a sort of fresh air inlet. And then there's also a vacuum that sort of pulls moisture and um, some of the atmospheric chemical or whatever um, out. So that is why your kit will come with a few of these extra lines that I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to install when we get to that point. But just so you know, if you're looking online and you haven't purchased this yet and you're wondering if you're getting the right one, 
you're gonna to wanna to make sure that if you have a 93 to 94, it's going to be this specific one, right? This part number. And if you have a later than 94, then there's a separate one. I don't know the exact variance between the earlier models versus the later models, but I do know that it is naturally important to line up with what you have. I think the gearing, honestly, is actually probably the only difference. I think the earlier models have a smaller actual gearing than the later models, but don't quote me on it. So here's your MSD. We're gonna go ahead and open this up so that we can see what items it came with. As I mentioned, we're going to go ahead and remove each of those screws to take off the cap itself and that will reveal the direction of our rotor and when we have the direction of the rotor we're going to mark it and go from there so now that it's all out in the open it'll be a little bit more familiar with what the items you need you have your tool and you're also going to have each of your screws and shims and different levels of gasket so this is the part that you won't see if you still have your OEM and then you're also not going to see this fresh air inlet. Those are the two items that I was talking about are different. You'll see the line where uh, your actual plug for your wiring harness will go. So it just looks a little different online if you're just getting the cap and rotor versus if you're getting the whole unit naturally. So we're going to go ahead and remove the existing screws with our tool here and then we will go from there. Now using a quarter size wrench, we're just gonna go around the tool and then we're going to use the screw side and we're just gonna put it on like that. And we're just gonna twist it on off. They shouldn't be super on there. Um, so usually just getting them loose is enough to get them twisted off. But I'll go ahead and knock out the other four. It's just one here, one there, one there, one there. So we'll get those off now. So here's what we got to work with. As you can see, the gasket is gone. So any moisture that came even near it, I'm sure got in it. It also looks fairly cooked. So all these points are looked corroded and whatnot. So definitely, on its last leg, definitely a large part of the issue I was having. So I did have to rotate the engine a little bit. I still have everything lined up, so it's not the end of the world. I just have to remember when I put the balancer on, which way the arrow was pointed, which I have. So all of this is now gonna start coming off, but like I mentioned, you're gonna wanna know what direction the rotor is in. And as you can see, it's got two screws on either side so there's really not a whole lot of ways that you could put it in completely incorrectly but you could totally 180 it if uh if you weren't paying attention so all that is cooked and coming out so i'm going to go ahead and undo those screws and we're going to get this out of here so the screws here are really really tiny they're actually a t8 and I think the new ones, or at least on the MSD, are even smaller. But basically, I just gave it a duct tape coat here, put it in a quarter drive, and that gave me kind of enough. I really only had to break it loose with ratchet, and then it was good to go. So it was a little like playing Operation in the Dark, but we got there. Now that that is removed, we're actually able to start pulling this plate off. So let me see if I can do this here this pulled out of the way. Here, let me get a better angle here. All right, tight spaces. I'm trying to get a decent, oh, decent light on it as well, but basically all this will pop off. It's just really, really gunked up. So, pulls here. Ugh, this is falling apart. Ooh. All right, so that is now popped off. This is just a connection plate here, so don't worry about that falling too much. Let me go ahead and set this aside, and we'll get everything relined up. So interesting enough, mine was completely cracked, which does actually affect some things. I mean, this is on the inside one, so it probably had less to do with it, but you could end up arcing and uh, having issues. I don't really think that would be 
part of my problem, but either way, that's a great way for all kinds of dirt, debris. I mean, you can see all this dust uh, that came in as well as moisture, and that's what kills these, these things. So the gasket is completely destroyed. It's also all over the uh, housing itself as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clean around that surface and then I'm going to be lining up the new one and then I will go ahead and put the rotor right back in place. You just wanna make sure naturally everything still lines up. You'll see my two screw holes either side are still where I left them, but you wanna make sure all these components are also where you left them and we will go ahead and start piecing this back together. I'll be honest, mine wasn't exactly primed for a rebuild. It was pretty well dirty, but I did spray it with some electrical cleaner and uh, hoping for the best, but I might end up having to replace the whole unit, but I will continue to push on um, because I think, honestly, I think it'll be fine once I get a new cap, but it was pretty beat. Now I have added the gasket around, right? And now we're going to go ahead and you'll remember that plate that fell, I'll line that back up in place and I will also put on the backing of our new Opti. Make sure you have the gasket lined up properly so you create a good seal right there. And then uh, we'll get this all buttoned back up. You are gonna want blue Loctite is recommended for the screws that are actually gonna be on the rotor one and two. So if you got an MSD like I did, then your screws will have a little bit of thread sealer on there already. I'm still gonna put the Loctite blue on just for safety anyways. You'll notice it comes with two tiny little washers. They don't go on this side, they actually go on the far side because they hate us and it's gonna make it a little bit more fun. Uh, once again, duct tape jacket on a quarter drive to help. Seems like it's a little blurry, hopefully not. Um, this is actually even smaller than the one that was originally on it. This is a 1.5, which we need the uh, square here. So we're going to go ahead and start mounting that on and go from there. So you'll notice I did take this off it with uh, 3 8 so I'm just keeping track of each of the bolts over here to the side and the other side as well. You can't really see where my finger is pointing, but there and there. Um, Honestly, if you try and do it while it's still on the block, you're gonna have to invent new swear words because you will run out. So this is just the easier way to do it. It's got a little notch here that's different than the rest of the gears, and that lines up with inside the block. And so as long as you pull it out straight, maybe your gearing will stay in the block, maybe it'll come with it, but either way, this is what lines everything up. So you really can't mess it up too bad. It would just be frustrating if it did get tweaked and you tried to put it back in. It just won't sit flush. Uh, but you don't have to worry about completely, you know, up upsetting the timing just because it's slightly off. You'll just not be able to get it back in. So it will always go back in the same way. But just for your own convenience, I wanna make sure it goes in flush. So I'm gonna line up the washers on either side of this. And so I got the thread sealant, and now I'm gonna go ahead and screw this down. So we got it dialed in. You just have to get it snug. Don't worry about torquing the heck out of it, and you'll end up ruining things if you do that. It just needs to be snug. The thread sealer will do most of the work. There is this gearing on the other side. If it's very dry, you can hit it with a little bit of uh, grease. It's just gonna go back into the block, and uh, we'll line this up. Put the screws exactly where they were before and then we could focus on the next part there is so something i probably will cover here before i put it back in if you did get a similar kit as mine where it has that vent tube at the bottom and the fresh air at the top you are going to want to plug the oem vent holes that were originally on this oppie spark so it did have a sort of sense of ventilation but it doesn't really work. And if you want the new ventilation to work properly, you need to plug these holes. So there's gonna be three holes down here. I'm gonna clean these up and then you're just gonna go ahead and put a silicone sealer in there. 
and then that way no airflow can come through here anymore and so the vacuum that you're going to be creating is going to be a lot more effective so i'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and then i'll get this line back up into the block and we'll go from there so now we're going to go ahead and put our cap back on you'll notice that you do have one screw that's a little bit different than the other four and that is because they have a sort of cap locking tool and this is going to go on this one specifically the reason that this is two different sizes is some of the opties have different thicknesses based on if it was machined or not so you just have to find the one that's going to be flush against your old opti backing and so that is snug and then the rest of them will go in the other four holes but we're going to line this back up pop it on do as directed with our little stubby here and we will start working on the ventilation, which I'll walk through right now. So now she's back in. Once again, snug is the name of the game. You don't have to overdo it. Uh, alternate, so if you're gonna start here, go there, go up, go across. That way it kinda sucks on there properly because you are gonna be crushing that, that rubber sort of gasket that's coming in with it and you don't want to like super over tighten one and then it not sit flush. So just alternate. I did the uh, cap lock last right here. And once again, you just have to pick the right side of it so that that line's flush like that. And then you're good to go. So now we're gonna go ahead and work on the ventilation hoses. At this point, you could put the wires back on, which I'll probably do here in a second. Uh, I'm gonna start with the fresh air. Actually, sorry, I am going to start with the bottom vacuum line first, and then we will go from there. You're going to route this behind the wires, so if you wanna get that end first, that makes sense to me. And this is the one that's going to be your vacuum line, so this is the one that will go on the distributor, so you're just gonna pinch these after you've got it slid on, get that locked in place, and then this is gonna route behind the cables, and then you're just going to snake this up and then it's gonna rest on this side right here. And then I'll show you where to connect it from there. I've also now reconnected my ignition wire, but I have routed it behind the wires. I went around here and then now this is up here with this black part facing this direction. And you're going to find this area right here and then you are going to be splicing into this one. So basically it's just taking over that position and connecting straight through. This is for your brake booster. And so I'm going to disconnect it just so I have more room to work. And then we will go from there. And then you will have this piece, which is your fresh air. That is going to connect right here. And then it's going to come up like this. So for now, we'll just let it dangle but we'll get it connected and then we're gonna go ahead and put our water pump back in. Once again, you have your six bolts and then I would recommend you put thread sealer on each of the bolts, get them in there snug. You could put your uh, wheel down here, reconnect that as well. We'll start connecting all of our hoses and then we'll get to the intake. And real quick on the water pump itself, so one, I would recommend putting additional grease in there if it looks like it's dry, just like the other thing. Um, there is a weep hole here, so as it starts to fail, this will start to leak, and that's usually what kills the Opti. I have heard of people drilling this and then putting sort of like a, a nipple on it and then running a line down past your Opti. Um, I am in... Like, I'm not doing it, so I don't really want to advise on it, but if that does sound interesting to you, I would definitely look into that as a, a good way to add some additional coverage. The only reason I'm not doing it is just because I'm pressed for time, but I do think it's a good idea. Um, I'm just not doing it on this round. But again, you just kind of put a, a fitting here, thread it, put a line, and then you'll run that along the opti and then if this or when this does start to leak it doesn't kill your opti as well i'm hoping that with the upgrades the opti has in itself that will be enough to protect it but that's some additional insurance so we've 
reconnected our wiring harness or replaced it if you got a new one. I put some new loom on it. I've reconnected top hose 10 and then thermostat is now in there as well. Reconnected this hose, lower hose, plug here, hose right there. I've connected the fan. All of the bolts on the water pump have the Permatex thread sealant and the lower crank wheel here is all tight and snug. You just have to do a little and then go to the next and alternate, right? As it walks it back into place and it will get snug back against that housing. So now we're at the point where we can connect our fresh air inlet. And we are gonna do that by going to our air intake here and we're gonna take a 3 16th drill bit and we're gonna drill a small hole right about here, right? And then that is what that inlet is gonna pop into. So I'm gonna drill that real quick. I'm gonna pop it back in and then I'll do a wrap here. So the final step here is you're gonna to wanna to bleed your system. And so get all the air bubbles out of your cooling. And you'll do that by unscrewing this slightly and then we're gonna run it and we're gonna to keep topping off. And then once it starts to sort of rise, we'll go ahead and cap this and wait for fluid to come spilling out of here. Once it's squirting out of here, this is the highest point, and therefore you are good to go. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that real quick. There you go. So I'll top off a little bit more, but now you know that the system is cleared. You can close this up. You're good to go. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.